October is almost done, and we have another week of the top regional MMA and combat sports highlights of the week. So we got one more week until we dive into November, but October so far... Let's get right into it. First highlight that I want to dive into here, Jessica Silva. She got a knockout against her opponent, Jocelyn Silva, funny enough, in round one of SFT 43. This is Standout Fighting Tournament 43. She actually engaged in a kickboxing fight with four ounce gloves, similar to that of what one championship does with their Muay Thai, except this was kickboxing. Three Muay Thai losses in a row, and she comes into this one with a banger of a knockout. Let's take a look. SFT 43 on a three fight losing streak, and she breaks it in beautiful fashion. Right hand from hell, dude. Oh, nice. Look at that cold ass walk off, too. Oh my god, cold as f walk oh, oh. Wow, she's out cold, man. Man, women with that knockout power in this sport just mm, I love it. The women start us off here strong. Let's get to our next one and migrate over to one championship. That's right, one championship for, and I know one championship's not the regional scene, but one Friday fights kind of is. It, it's guys and gals looking to earn contracts to get in to one championship. So I will bunch it in. And you know what? The kid that we're about to highlight here, He's 17 years old. So, you know, what? I don't care if it's pro or, or you know, the, the big leagues or not. I'm, ca I'm counting it in this regional list. That is right. Elias Kasem. Look how young he is. Doesn't even have any info. Head kick knockout on one Friday fights 37. An absolute barn burner, ladies and gentlemen. An absolute barn burner, war, firefight. Whatever you want to call it, it came to a sudden halt at the final seconds of the second round with a beautiful KO from the 17-year-old Muay Thai prospect. Let's get into it. These guys aren't at the highest level yet, and this kid is 17 years old. Let's take a look. So final minute of the second round, dude, and, and no joke, like most of the fight leading up to this, this, it was, it was an absolute war. Complete madness is correct. Dude, like, just continues to walk forward and forward. Oh! What the fuck? <laughs> what? He's 17. Oh! Dude, he hit him with the foot. He didn't even hit him with the shin. He didn't even hit him with the shin. He hit him with the foot. He hit him with the foot, not even the shin. Unbelievable. Had to include it on this list. Uh, let's go over to a familiar name. Someone who's not 30 or someone who's not 17, but someone who's 37 to a former UFC fighter, Charles Rosa. Boston strong, Charles Rosa back in CES. And oh boy, did he make an impact. Returns to CES and gets a beautiful submission with a guillotine in the second round at CES 75. And guys, the cherry on top, the icing on the cake here, he donated all his winnings to the Memorial Fund dedicated to breast cancer research. What a beautiful soul. 
honestly. Three KOTKO, nine submissions, three decisions, five and eight in the UFC, six and O oh in CES. Now, upon losing to Damon Jackson, TJ Brown, Nathaniel Wood, he goes back to CES where he developed and like I said, got a beautiful submission. Let's take a look at it right now. Jeez, inches away from getting a hook kick knockout on this show. <laughs> Oh, do you think he was just going for that takedown for the sake of going to take down? Do you think he got that left hand to the head was the catalyst for that? He just left his neck there hanging for him. Great too easy. Rosa, too easy. Who is this guy? Gafrov? Come on, dude. Too easy. Too easy. Let's take a look again. Got to get a little bit of respect. And this may be where he's at his best. I, I think it was a left the to the head that, like, him. certainly not on the ground. Caused him to go for the takedown, but let's but see. Maybe it was the calf kick. Oh, there it is. There it was. There it was. It was that. It was the the kick to the the right leg of his opponent, followed by I think the straight left, and he was like, "Yeah, nope, I'm going for the takedown and leaving my neck wide open." Good sprawl there by Rosa. Again, this was just the beginning uh, of the second round. Takedown. Now he okay. sinks this one. Yeah, nice. Too. Tight. Oh boy. Oh boy. We're turning back to CES. Joanne Sullivan a while back, and that's why you guys see all the pink, the pink suit, the Joanne Sullivan Memorial Front Foundation. And uh, I wanted to present my win money, my win bonus, as a check to donate to the charity. Thank you so much, Pat. Unbelievable. All right, moving right along to a fighter who, whose moniker is good, is comical, but will do him no favors. If he wants to train with his brothers and sisters in Dagestan, that's right. We are going to HFC MMA to see Antoli Nadratovsky, the Siberian Connor, get a beautiful finish as well. And Natoli Nadratovsky, the Siberian Connor, you're not going to be invited to the Dagestani mountains to train with the boys. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. But anyways, he scored a nasty spinning back fist at HFC MMA. Four KOT goes, one submission, one decision. Let's check it out here. Nasty. When I saw spinning back fist and the setup there, I thought it was going to be the other hand. I didn't think he was going to set it up on that side. Oh! Did you hear that? Smash! All right. Last but not least. And honestly, I thought originally when we were streaming this event that this was going to be one of the best submissions of the week, but oh no, it became one of the best TKOs of the week. Some of you might know where I'm going with this. Some of you might know where I'm going with this. Last one of the week, ladies and gentlemen, in BFL, that's right, Battlefield Fighting League, Navid Zagane knocks out David Briones with the brutal slam to evade the rare buggy choke that he that is Briones had sunk in pretty deep to that point the broadcast was absolutely losing their minds when this was happening they went from being so excited to potentially getting the seeing the first buggy choke ever in the promotion and this is BFL 74 if i'm not mistaken or 78 my apologies BFL 78 they're 78 shows in and i've never seen a buggy choke before so they were losing their minds losing their minds and then you see Navid start to counter and try to get out of it and they start losing it <sighs> oh my god one guy starts swearing yeah one guy swore on the broadcast I'm allowed to do that because it's my channel, but like, you're not allowed to do that on Fight Pass, man. I mean, I, I used to work in hockey broadcast. You're not allowed to swear. So they went from pure excitement to utter shock 
cursing and everything. The 27-year-old Navid Zang uh, Zangane doesn't have that good of striking, but he's a damn good wrestler, ladies and gentlemen. He's 3-1 in BFL. I, I guess at this level, a little bit of a step up. Guys, I, I thought we were going to see a buggy choke submission on this series, on this show. Instead, we got some Rampage Pride FC style slams. It was beautiful. Let's take a look. That's the buggy choke. That's the buggy choke. Oh, and he's out. broadcast makes it the broadcast makes this one exciting all right let's take a look again and listen in one of them swears dude one of them swears by the way shout out to vancouver british columbia this was honestly the only good highlight of the night usually bfl puts on way better shows than this i feel bad for sending our friend zach who lives in vancouver he went to the show and he's like bro that was one of the worst shows i've ever seen but anyways tricky no some people don't even know what that is oh he's fishing for it it's a, yeah, big yeah. Oh. It's a really cool setup But as everyone says, keyboard uh, experts and the experts, there's a easy way out of the buggy choke. And that's exactly what the Persian fighter here did to evade it or get out of it. I should say not evade it. He's got to try to lock his hands onto his bicep right now. That would be the first buggy choke. Wow. Shit. There it is, there it is. <laughs> I mean, I don't blame him. Holy shit. I remember someone in our live chat too was like, the broadcast just swore, the broadcast just swore. By the way, the fighter was okay. I honestly want to just dive into this a little bit more as there was a lot of pushback on Twitter. People saying, well, that's illegal. You can't do that. And even an MMA fighter who will highlight here was was talking about saying, no, you can't do that. That's illegal. And actually Kaposa and some other, uh, I guess, fight fans on Twitter found the actual rule set and said, no, actually, like, you can, you can. Mika Miller, who's Cole Miller's brother, by the way, guys, former UFC fighter Cole Miller, uh, he's spiking someone on their head is illegal, but okay. And Kaposa replies, per the rules, when there's a submission being attempted, it's fair game. The onus is on the fighter to release the sub attempt, dangerous as f regardless. And again, Mika Miller, he, he's a pro MMA fighter. I'm not sure if he's retired yet or not, but he did have his, he did have a fight last year. Let's just take a look at the rule set here in detail. Spiking the opponent to the canvas onto the head or neck. Pile driving. A pile drive is considered to be any throw where you control your opponent's body, placing his feet towards the sky with his head straight down, and then forcibly drive your opponent's head into the canvas or flooring material. It should be noted when a fighter is placed into a submission hold by their opponent if that fighter is capable of elevating their opponent they may bring that opponent down in any fashion they desire because they are not in control of their opponent's body their opponents are in control of their body the fighter who's attempting the submission can either adjust their position or let go of their hold before being slammed to the canvas so all you who think that that's illegal all you who thinks that who think that is dirty you are wrong that's it for our top five finishes of the week in regional combat sports and mma smash that like button on this channel if you haven't already and comment which highlight there you liked the best and let me know if i missed any off the regional scene as well and i will see you on the next one to wrap up october baby here on the channel